Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Today we're going to work on what we call renaming fractions. It's really very similar to what we did in the last section where we talked about equivalent fractions. And if you remember, we said that with fractions, you can multiply a fraction by anything you want as long as you multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. And when you do that, the fraction might look different, but in fact, it's actually the same fraction. It represents the same amount of stuff, all right? So here we're going to do renaming fractions, and the best way to show you what we're talking about is just to give you a problem, and then you'll understand quickly what we're doing. So what, what if we have the fraction 4 fifths, and on the quiz or a test, you might see that it's equal to a fraction with a bottom number of 10. And what you want to do is you want to provide an answer, what would, be, what would the top number be here? So in other words, you have 4 fifths, and you're told that it's equal to another fraction with a bottom number of 10. And so it's your job to figure out, okay, if it's equal to another fraction with a bottom number of 10, what would the top number have to be to do that? Okay, so again, remember, you can multiply a fraction by anything you want as long as you do it to the top and the bottom. All right, so if you think about it, you have four fifths here. So let me go over here, four fifths. So we know that we're trying to get to a bottom number of 10. All right, what would we have to multiply by to give me 10 on the bottom? Well, I have a five here, so I would need to multiply by two to give me 10. But if I multiply by two on the bottom, then I must, must, must also do it to the top. That's the only way to keep these fractions equal. All right, and so if I do that, the top would become eight and the bottom would become 10. So now I know that the answer that I'm seeking is eight tenths. This is what you would circle on your test. So again, you're given a situation where you're, you're trying to figure out if this fraction and this fraction are equal, this bottom number is 10, what do I need to multiply this by to give me 10? I figure out that I have to multiply by two. But if I multiply by two on the bottom, I have to also do it on the top, and that means it'll be eight tenths. So if I look at eight-tenths of a pizza and four-fifths of a pizza, it represents the same amount of pizza. That's basically the bottom line. Let's do another problem. Let's say that I have two-thirds, and I'm claiming that's equal to another fraction with a bottom number of 12. And I'd like to figure out what is this uh, fraction have to have on the top to make this happen. So, Again, what I usually do is go off to the side and write my two-thirds down because that's what I'm starting with. And I look at it and I say, all right, I'm trying to get from 3 to 12. What do I have to multiply to do that? 3 times what is going to give me 12? Well, I'm going to have to multiply by 4 because 4 times 3 is 12. But if I do this, I'm going to also need to multiply by 4 on the top. That's the only way to keep it balanced. And when I do this, 4 times 2 is 8. The bottom number is 12. So this, again, is going to be 8 twelfths. All right? Uh, so this fraction, 8 twelfths, is the same as 2 thirds. So let's go on and move into another one. Let's say I have 1 ninth, and I'm claiming that it's equal to a fraction with a 5 on the top, and I'm trying to figure out what would be on the bottom there. Okay, what number would be on the bottom to make these two fractions equal? So the, the best way the, to proceed is you start with your 1 ninth and you look at it and you say, all right, I'm trying to get to 5 on the top. What do I have to multiply here to give me a 5? Well, I'll need to multiply by 5 because 1 times 5 gives me 5. But if I do it on the top, I'll also need to do it on the bottom. I have to keep it balanced. So I'll have 5 over 45 because 9 times 5 is 45. So what I'll have is 45. Five, and this is the final answer. So in my problem, I was trying to provide and, and show what this bottom fraction would have to be, and the only thing that it can be is 45, because I'm multiplying by 5 here, and so I have to multiply by 5 right over there. All right, let's go and work some more just to give you a little more practice. What if I have 2 elevenths, and that's equal to 8 over something? It's a blank and I need to figure out what do I need to do. Well, if you look at this, I'm trying to go from two to eight on the top. I have to multiply. Two times what is going to give me eight? Two times what is going to give me eight? Well, two times four is eight. So if I go and rewrite all this stuff again, I'll have two elevenths. I'm gonna to have to multiply by four on the top. That's gonna give me eight. So 
So then I'll also have to multiply by 4 in the bottom. So I'll have 8 40 fourths. 11 times 4 is 44. So this has to be 8 40 fourths. That is the final answer. And once you get the hang of this, you know, it's really not that hard. You just have to get a little practice with it. Now let's mix it up a little bit. Let's say I have 5 over something is equal to 25 over 30. Now this one's a little bit different for a couple reasons. Um, the first reason is because the unknown, the, the blank, is on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. That's one thing that's different. Um, but it's the same procedure each time, all right? We know, okay, that these two are equal. So we know that whatever this fraction is, whatever this thing is, I need to be able to multiply it by something to give me this one over here. So I see that I have a 5 and a 25 here, and the only way that by multiplication that I can get there is to multiply by 5, because 5 times 5 gives me 25. 5 times 5 gives me 25. So what we're really writing down here is 5 times 5, okay, is 25 over 30. So if I'm multiplying by 5, okay, then I'm going to multiply by 5 on the bottom. So the other question then is, if I'm multiplying by 5 on the bottom, what does this unknown number have to be? What times 5 will give me 30? What times 5 will give me 30? The only thing that works is 6, because 6 times 5 is 30. So this has to be a 6, and this is the final answer. See if you understand what's going on here. What we're basically trying to figure out is what this unknown number is. We, we know from the top that the top has to be multiplied by 5. That means that the bottom also has to be multiplied by 5. And since we know that the top is multiplied by 5, and we know that the bottom is also multiplied by 5, the only number that can fit here is a 6, because 6 times 5 gives me 30. 6 times 5 gives me 30. So all you're doing is you're doing a little bit differently than before with the other types of problems, but it's the same concept. When you have a fraction, you can multiply the top and the bottom by the same number, and it doesn't change the fraction. 5 sixths is the same as 25 out of 30. If you cut two different cakes into the uh, different number of slices like that and dish them out according to these fractions, it's going to be the same thing. So really this section was basically another lesson in equivalent fractions, but you see it sometimes called renaming fractions because sometimes you have to predict when you're only given half of the other fraction what the other half might be. But it's the same concept. You've got to figure out what you're multiplying by and then do it on the top and the bottom and then you'll get the equivalent uh, fraction or the renamed fraction there. I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Keep practicing. Make sure you understand these topics. Follow me on to the next section where we will continue building your skills in fractions.